This is the way we sing on the old campground. This is the way we sing on the old campground. Oh, meet in tonight. Meet in tonight. Meeting on the old campground. Oh, meet in tonight. Meet in tonight. Meeting on the old campground. This is the way we shout on the old campground. This is the way we shout on the old campground. This is the way we shout on the old campground. This is the way we shout on the old campground. Oh, meet in tonight, meet in tonight, meet it on the old campground. Oh, meet in tonight, meet in tonight, meet it on the old campground. This is the way we sing on the old campground. This is the way we sing on the old campground. This is the way we sing on the old campground. This is the way we sing on the old campground. Meet in tonight, meet in tonight, meeting on the old campground. Meet in tonight, meet in tonight. Meeting on the old campground. Oh, we're gonna have a meeting. 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 We're gonna be shouting. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna be singing. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna be dancing. Gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna testify. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna hear the word. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna have a meeting. Gonna have a meeting. We're gonna clap our hands. We're gonna do our dance. We're gonna shout for joy. We're gonna hear the word. We're gonna have a meeting. We're gonna have a meeting. Meeting tonight. Meeting tonight. Meeting on the old campground. Meeting tonight. Meeting tonight. together tonight to bless the Lord, hallelujah, and to get a word for our souls. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, let's lift our hands and praise the Lord for the privilege of being here on tonight. Hallelujah, in the house of God, able to worship freely his holy name, amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time for testimony service on this evening, and we are ready to hear what the Lord has been doing for the people of God. Amen. I was thinking about that song. It sounds like, you know, in the old days, I like Little House on the Prairie, y'all. And they out there playing and hanging out in the trees and doing all kinds of stuff, and the teacher would go to the porch and just ring the bell. That's what that song gives to me. Hey, all y'all people, we finna have a meeting over here. Over here on the old campground, Elder Walker said they're going to be shouting. Come on now, some singing going on. Oh, we thank God for blessing us to be able to worship him freely on tonight. I'm ready to hear what he's been doing in the lives of his people. Who is ready to talk to us tonight and tell us what God has been doing in your life? Amen? Amen. Come on. All right. Now, 
y'all know we got to clap for Sister Reed. thank the Lord for his healing power, don't we? Let me tell y'all something. Some of us, we get a pain in our toe. We decide we ain't going to work. <laughs> and we sure ain't going to church. It's raining outside. I ain't going nowhere. Honey, make some cocoa and stay in the house. Y'all, Sister Reed be here. Rain, snow, body hurting. Come on now. I think that deserves a hand praise. That is faithfulness and dedication, y'all. Listen, they told me if you can't say you're faithful, they can't say much about you. Sister Reed is so faithful, and we thank God for her. Amen. How many know God's going to bless her with this test coming up? He's going to do the work. Who else is ready to talk to us tonight? I know God's been doing some stuff in your life. Anybody else? I'm ready. All right. Anybody? Y'all ready? Who I want to hear from? I want to hear from Brother Reed. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it is. <laughs> I, I, you kind of caught me off guard, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we all. We, I just, I'm just thankful to be up and around you all today. I'm doing what I have to do. Know where I get my strength from. My strength comes from the Lord. When I get down, I ask and I say, Lord, help me. I say, Lord, help me. And the things begin to start getting me better. I'm just, I'm just just thankful to be able to just sit down and take care of my my wife here. We never know what comes up in life, you know. I learned that the older I got. See, now I just got to get the hang of what I what I got and take care of what I got and just be okay. Oh, Lord, I thank you. No one to start to talk about it. Thank you very much. He is doing a fantabulous job. Taking care of Sister Reed, amen. It's such a blessing. I always did feel sad when you go to a nursing home to visit somebody and they say, oh, yeah. Or you go, like, with a church group and you're going to do ministry. And they say, be sure you stop by room 12 because they don't get very many visits. That makes me sad. It makes me think about their whole life. Did they not have kids? You know, what happened in their life that people don't come visit them? But when you have somebody like Brother Reed taking care of Sister Reed, whoo, how many know she's super blessed? Hey, Amen. God is good. God is good. Blessing them to take care of each other. Amen. Put your hands together for our testimonies on tonight. God is indeed blessing his people. Amen. All right. We thank God for our testimonies on tonight. We know God is a good God. He's working miracles today, just like he was working in the Bible, y'all. What if we could just catch hold of some of that stuff with our faith? Y'all know some things that could be happening around in here. Woo, God could be doing things. God could have you with your own businesses. Come on now. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they was talking about Brother Reed. They was talking about, yeah, and that barbecue business he had. So that's all right. He'll get back to it when he feel like it's time. I was like, well, go ahead then. God going to give him that cruise oil like he did that woman in the Bible. Come on now. He put that woman in business. Listen, God can make you an entrepreneur. How many believe he'll do it? Amen. I know he will. All right. Well, at this time, 
we're going to invest into the kingdom of God. How many is ready? Listen, putting your money in the bank nowadays, what they paying? 0.001%. Listen, some people say you might as well put that money under the mattress. You ain't going to make no interest. Make one penny interest per quarter. What in the world? Come on now. But how many know when you invest in the kingdom of God? Ooh, when he start paying dividends. Look here. It'll bring back some stuff into the hands of the brothers. it he will do it hallelujah i've seen him do it i know he'll do it again amen all right well we are going to get with sister jackson here and elder roca haven't they been doing a good job with the song service y'all amen we enjoy them amen let's bless the lord with them tonight Do me like the Lord, and nobody. Do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, I say, can nobody. Do me like Jesus, can nobody. Do me like the Lord, can nobody. Do me like Jesus, he's my Told me to run on, pick me up, and he told me to run on, pick me up, and he told me to run on, he's my friend. Oh, I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, I said he picked me up and he told me to run on. Pick me up and he told me to run on. Pick me up and he told me to run on. He's my friend. Oh, can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody? Like Jesus, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do 
to know that the Son of God is your friend, your Savior, and your Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to give you to the hands of none other than Elder Clarence Davis. Somebody say, bless him, Jesus. Come on, say, bless him, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
you come on and give God some praise on tonight. Ah, uh, come on, that's all right for me. I said, come on, let's give God some praise on tonight. If he's your friend, like I just heard you say, come on and give Jesus some praise. Truly, he's worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Come on, come on, don't short change him tonight. Hallelujah. What's the highest praise on tonight? <laughs> yes, Lord. Amen. Truly, God is worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Come on, let's clap our hands one more time and give God, amen, a thunderous applause. Amen. I thank God, amen, for being my friend. <laughs> amen. When you feel like you don't have no friends, I want you to know he'll be your friend. Can I get a witness on tonight? Amen. We thank God, amen, for being here one more time. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Truly, we count it a blessing to be here one more time at the wonderful Waco Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Where we can come and dig into the word of God. How many know the word of God has treasure? Amen. And you can find this treasure, amen, if you take out the time, amen, to dig into the word of God and see what it is that God has to say to us. So because how many know God is yet talking and speaking to his people? Yes, he is. Amen. God is yet, amen, speaking into the lives of his children. Amen. And we thank God, amen, that God would not leave us, amen, without a word. Amen. And we're going to live by faith. Amen. That's what our pastor preached. Amen. Apostle, amen. He tells us, amen, if God is going to lead us by faith, he got to keep talking to us. He got to keep speaking to us because the just shall live by faith. Amen. But the faith, amen, the Bible lets us know faith comes by hearing, amen, but by hearing the word of God. Amen. So I, I, I need his word. Is that anybody else's testimony tonight? I need his word. Amen. Take everything else, but give me the Bible. Amen. Give me, give me, give me the scriptures. Amen. You can take video games and everything else. I'm too old for that anyway. Praise the Lord. Give me the scriptures. Give me <laughs> the word of God. And the word of God will sustain you. Amen. Now, if y'all pray with me tonight, I don't know what my voice is doing or trying to do. Amen. You know, you got stuff going around and amen. Praise the Lord. But if you're a street preacher, you just learn to preach through stuff. So y'all pray my strength. Amen. Because I'm going to preach through this. Amen. Tonight. Amen. But we want to give honor to God. Amen. To our leaders. Amen. Apostle Herman Murray and his lovely wife. Come on. Let's thank God for them. Amen. To our bishop, Bishop Andre Lee and his wife. Come on, let's clap our hands for them. Amen. And we want to thank God, amen, for, amen, Pastor Meredith Murphy and his wife, amen, and the foundation that they have laid, amen. We give honor, amen, unto them, amen, to my wife in her absence, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. She's probably watching, amen, hopefully. But she's doing ministry at the house, amen. The baby is, we're again, under the weather. We all know, but amen. We pray for her, and she, amen, labors there in, in that vineyard. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we thank God for each and every one of you that are here and those that may be watching. I give honor to God, amen. He's the head of my life. He's my heavenly father. To Jesus Christ, my Savior, and the Holy Ghost, my keeper. And I'm just grateful, amen, to say that I'm saved. Yet saved, yet sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a burning fire. Amen. I want to speak into your hearts tonight and encourage you with what God has dropped in my heart. Is that all right? Hopefully we can just talk, talk into your heart and edify you because we need, amen, we need to be strong people of God in this last day hour. Amen. Yes, we do. We need to be strong people of God. In this. How many know that God don't need weak people? God can use us in our week, but I'm talking about God needs the strong, robust people of God. Amen. If he's going to do a work down here, he needs people, amen, that are strong, amen, and capable, amen, of doing the work that he has given us to do. Amen. I want to call your attention to the book of Exodus. That's Exodus, the 19th chapter. We'll start reading at that first verse. Amen. We're going to drop down all the way down to verse number eight. That's Exodus chapter number 19. 
verse number one, and we're going to read down to verse number eight. And I may have to get a reading tonight. <coughs> praise the Lord. But I, I'm going to start it off. Amen. But Elder Roker, you may have to praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Let, us, let the Lord use you. Amen. Exodus 19 and 1. When you have it, please indicate by saying amen. 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 And the word of God reads along this order. In the third month, in the third month, <clears throat> when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. And they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how many know God whooped the Egyptians? I mean, he, he laid the smack down on the Egyptians. Yes, he did. Brought them out with a high hand. He says, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my com covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people back unto the Lord. God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand. We know the story. Amen. Those who have been in church any length of time, amen, we understand. God sent Moses down to Egypt, amen, to deliver the people of Israel out. And they come out, amen, they come, amen, to the Mount of God, amen, and they come to, to worship God and to receive instructions from him. He tells them, amen, that I bear you on eagle's wings. I brought you out. You saw what I did to the Egyptians. Now, I brought you unto myself. Lord, have mercy. And he says, and if you will keep my covenant, you will be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And Moses gave them the words, and the people responded and said, everything that you've said, we will do. Well, we also know the story of Israel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We know that amen in one tune. Too much longer, amen, in the book of Exodus that we found that God was wroth with them because they didn't stay true to their word. But I want to encourage you tonight. I want you to look to your neighbor. Help me announce my text. Tell them, neighbor, stay true. That's all I want to talk about. That's all I want to talk about. Stay true. Stay true to God. Amen. We're living in a day and time where people need to see what loyalty to God looks like. Amen. Amen. We, we need to, amen, the people of God, amen, uh, it's incumbent upon us to show the world, amen, that this is what an allegiance to God, a life dedicated to God looks like. Amen. It's not, it's not a life dedicated to God just when things are good or when things are going easy, amen, but it's a life, amen, dedicated to God through the thick and the thin, amen, a, a sense of loyalty, because, you know, we live in a day and time where there's a lot of people, amen, they're talking about, well, really, there's a lot of people who are deconstructing, so they say, from the faith, yeah, they're they're, they're walking away, amen, from God. They, these are people who have been ministers, people who have been uh, a gospel artist, amen, people who have sung the Zion song, and all of a sudden they feel like, amen, that they need to turn away from God and deconstruct their faith. Amen. And, you know, this is not uh, any mystery to us because, you know, the scripture says that in the last days there shall be a great falling 
Amen. And, and, you know, you can't look at the crowds because, amen, the crowds, you would think that God is the most popular person on the world. In the world, praise the Lord. You would think, amen, that God with, with the number of conferences and, amen, and revivals and things that are going on around the world in the name of God, you would think, amen, Christianity is as healthy and robust. I'm talking about here in America. But when you look deeper and when you look closer, amen, you see people who will proclaim God publicly, amen, amongst the, the saints, amen, or amongst the people of God. But then they will get on talk shows and, and television shows and then they will down the church. <laughs> Y'all pray for me tonight. And God, amen, needs people, amen, that's going to stay true. Not fair-weather Christians, amen, not fair-weather people, amen, that just want to get with God, amen, long enough in order to become famous and get the acclaim, Lord have mercy, of the church, amen. And then when all of a sudden the church demands a standard and a lifestyle from them, then they want to get upset and say, you're demanding too much. Well, listen, amen, the Bible calls us the ecclesia. He, we are the called-out ones. Amen. And we are not called to just anything. Amen. And when you look at the scriptures, we are called unto him. Oh, Lord have mercy. That, that's humbling. Oh, amen. That's, it, it's almost hard to even talk about. We are called unto him. Jesus have mercy. We are, we, he calls us to himself. Amen. That's what we read, amen, in the scriptures. He said, and I brought you unto myself. I brought you to me. I wanted you. I, I desired you. I wanted to have fellowship with you. I wanted a people that I can call you. I'm your God and you are my people. Amen. We're not called. Amen. Because, you know, when you use the word called, a lot of people get the idea that when you're called, it's, it's called to go do something. You're called to do. <laughs> Lord have mercy. When I, when I call my kids, I, I try to remind them. You know, when they be upstairs sometimes, and I, I call their names, and I, and I say, you know, Emmanuel or Chloe, and they'll, they'll answer back from upstairs. No, I didn't call you because I didn't know what your voice sounded like. I, call, I want you to come here. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, because, I, amen, I got some, got some old school in me. Now, listen, when I call you, I mean for you to, <laughs> well, like, and to read, you understand what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. And when I called you, amen, it ain't for you to holler back at me, amen, from upstairs. I want you to come, come to me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and when God calls us, it's not for us to go and do something or for us to stay where we are, but God calls us unto himself. Ooh, he calls us to come to him. He calls us, amen, to draw nigh unto him. And the Bible tells us this, amen, throughout the scriptures. It said that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation, a peculiar or a special kind of people. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and into whose light? His marvelous light. We, we're, I'm called to him. The only way, amen, I'm able to see is by being able to be in his light. Lord, have mercy. Amen. C.S. Lewis said, I believe in God as I, amen, believe in the sun, not because I see the sun, but without it, I can't see anything else. I need God in order to help my vision. It is through him that I can see everything else. I, you learn to see everything through the grid of God. Through what he says in his word, through how he directs us, amen, to live our lives. My vision is through his word. We got to be called to him. Amen. And sadly, we're living in a day and time where a lot of people want to be called, but they don't want to be called to him. Lord Jesus, I'm trying. They, they don't want to be called to him. They want to be called to, the, to service. They want to be called to ministry. They, they got these great ambitions. On the side, that is good. Amen. But none of that means anything if we're not first loyal to him. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. I'm not so much as loyal to preaching as I'm loyal to him. 
All right, I'm, I'm, starting, to, I'm starting to feel something now. I, I'm, not as, I'm not as dedicated, amen, just to doing service, and I'm grateful, amen, to be able to serve in the, in the service of the Lord, but I love him above everything else, amen, because I learned a long time ago, amen, that you can be active and not be productive. You got a lot of people that's moving around and they're active, amen, active doing this, active doing that, amen, and that's good, amen, you're busy, amen, doing a whole bunch of stuff, but when God says come here, that don't mean go do something, it it means, boy, come here, (laughs) it means come here, Come, come to me, God wants fellowship. God wants us as his own prized possession and his own prized people in the world. He calls us unto himself. Amen. And as God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, and he did it with a mighty deliverance. Lord have mercy. I mean, you're talking about laying the stop. Listen, the Bible says, has there ever been a people? (laughs) You know, the Bible says that they became a nation in one day. There was an oppressed people one moment. And when, when, they, when their Passover was over, Egypt kicked them out, and they was automatically a nation. Just right there on the, on the wings of the exit, of the exodus, they became a nation. And then God, he, he secured it, or he, he confirmed it by vanquishing the armies of, of Egypt in the Red Sea. You're talking about something treacherous. God waited until they got right there in the middle of the ocean, right there in the middle of the sea. Then said, okay, then I'm going to let the waters come back. Man, listen, God is nobody to play with. (laughs) Brought them out with a mighty deliverance. We still talking about this stuff to this day. With a mighty deliverance. But he didn't bring them out of Egypt to lose them in the wilderness. Oh, that mercy. He didn't. The intention was to bring them out, to bring them into the promised land. And I want you to know tonight that God didn't save you, amen, to lose, uh, save you out of the world or out of sin to lose you to the world. No, he did not. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. look at your neighbors and neighbor. God is trying to take me all the way. Yes, he is. All the way the Savior leads me. He's trying to take you all of the way. He's not taking you out, amen, just to leave you. He's not fattening frogs for snakes. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Just showing you some of his power, just showing you some of his glory, just for you to come out of here, amen, and then be lost in the world and be lost to all of this confusion and all of this foolishness that's out here in the world. God calls you because he wants to bring you first to himself. And then after changing you and after having fellowship with you, he can use you to be a witness to the rest of the people around you. Can I get a witness here? Amen. The Bible says, amen, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, listen what John says. John says, truly, our fellowship is with the Father. And with his son, Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. We get to have fellowship with the Father. Lord have mercy. We get to have fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. I'm talking about an honor granted unto us by God. I mean, you, you, sometimes it's, a, it's, a, it's good every now and then to read through the scriptures and see just how we compare to God. Amen. You know, the Bible says that if all the nations came together, and was put in a bucket, we'd be less than a drop <laughs> compared to God. We're less than a drop in a bucket <laughs> compared to God. So why would he want fellowship with us? What is man that he's so mindful of us? It is an honor and a privilege for God to want to have fellowship with us. And yet the enemy will use stuff in life to try to get us not to stay true to the will and to the way of God. Amen. He brought us out because he wants us to have fellowship with him. Amen. That's, if I don't drive nothing else, I'm going to drive that word fellowship. 
Amen. Because God, you know, it was only privilege in the Old Testament. We see, amen, God every now and then, amen, he speaks to Moses. And when he talk about speaking to Moses, he said, I speak to him like a face-to-face. I don't talk to him like, like I talk to some of these other people. Amen. I, I talk to them in dreams and visions. They far off. But when I talk to Moses, we talk like we, we hear him. I talk to him face to face. That's the kind of fellowship that we get to have with God. You know, Moses was privileged then through time and because of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we're able to have fellowship with God. You have to understand that this was always the plan of God. Amen. This was always, amen, what God wanted. Amen. When we see this in the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17, verse 21, he says that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. God wants unity. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. God wants fellow, he wants union with him. Amen. And therefore we see this calling, amen, unto the Lord, amen, throughout the scriptures. Throughout the scriptures we see, amen, from time to time and from place to place, amen, God calling upon people, calling them out, calling them to himself, amen, the people, amen, he, he'll go, go through your family, he'll go through different tribes, go through different individuals, and he'll pick people out, and he'll call them unto himself. Gideon, a man hiding behind the wine press, <laughs> he comes up to him and says, you're a mighty man of valor. Gideon was like, who, me? called unto himself to do a work for the Lord. It, and and, and let, me, let me say this, amen, that a call, that when we're called unto God, it does denote separation. Uh-oh. Let me. <laughs> when I call my children, I don't care if they're upstairs playing a game or amen, tic-tac-toe, or whatever it is they're doing, when I call them, I'm calling them away from and to me. Away from whatever that is, whatever they think that's important, it don't matter to me because I need them for something else. <laughs> I need them for something that I think is important. Can I get a win? Amen. And so when God calls us, whatever we think is important don't really matter. We are called away from and to him. And so it denotes separation. That means when God calls us or when he's calling people, he's calling them away from some stuff. Amen, some stuff that, amen, you got to let go. Amen, some things or some people or some places that you got to separate from in order to be or to do what it is God has called you to be and do. Amen, so we see in Israel, God calls them. Give me a Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter and the sixth verse. Amen, Deuteronomy amen. seven, starting verse number six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Yes. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose Israel to be a special people unto himself. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Read. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. Israel, don't get up, don't get full of yourself. <laughs> I didn't do it because you was, you know, you had it all going on. I didn't call you because you had everything together. I didn't call you because you're the mo most numerous of all the nations. In fact, he's going to read, you were fewer. Go ahead and read. For ye were the fewest of all people. Ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, uh -huh. and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, yes. and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I called you out because I had to, one, I loved you, but I was keeping my word that I made to your forefathers. And I didn't bring you out because you were so great of a nation, but I brought you out because I'm, 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 even though you're a few in number, I loved you and I set my love upon you. And I called you unto myself. 
Israel, amen, was called, amen, out of everything, called out of Egypt, called from all of the nations around them. And, you know, God would tell them, don't mix and mingle with any of this stuff. He says not to go into these other places with these other gods, amen, and mingle with them. Amen, we're going to get to it later. Amen, but God called them, I'm calling you to myself. A special people, a peculiar people. Lord have mercy. Then he also does this, amen, with the Levites. Amen, he takes from within the nation of Israel and he sanctifies or he separates, amen, a group of people, amen, to serve him in the priesthood, which is called, which are the Levites. Amen, give me uh, Numbers 3 and 11 and 12. Is it okay if we just read a little bit tonight? Amen. That's Numbers chapter number 3, verses 11 through 12. Numbers chapter 3, 11 through 12 reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel mm. instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix mm. among the children of Israel. Yes. Therefore the Levites shall be mine. The Levites shall be mine. <laughs> I chose I, I just I didn't choose him from among the firstborn of every of every tribe. No, I'm separating this whole tribe unto me. They are mine. Amen. Theologians speculate that, amen, maybe God has done this or is doing this because, amen, at the time when, when Israel rebelled, amen, at the foot of Mount Sinai and, God, and Moses came down to see them, amen, going crazy. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't made them a molten calf and made them a, a little toy that f for them to worship. Amen. The Bible says Moses comes down and he's angry and he says, who's on the Lord's side? Come to me. Come here. And nobody but the Levites came. That's what the scriptures say. No, the, only the Levites came on Moses' side. And Moses, I guess, when that line of demarcation was made clear, he said, slew the rest of them. <laughs> I'm talking about judgment. Separation and judgment came in one day. I'm, I'm telling you, when God calls you, he's calling you from something. And calling you to himself. And so they say, amen, that because they answered the call of Moses, God is honoring them by separating that whole tribe unto himself to be in the priesthood. Also, when you continue to read, amen, the Bible lets us know that there was a particular group of people called the Nazarites. And the Nazarites, amen, were special, amen, people. They was people who uh, a vow was imposed upon them, and they made a vow, and, and, and at the, the keeping of the vow, God would use them in miraculous ways. And, and all of us know a famous Nazarite, amen, and his name is Samson. Samson was a Nazarite. Amen. He, he, he couldn't just do anything. Amen. He was chosen for God unto himself. Give me Judges 13, verse number 5. Judges 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, yes. and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. From the womb. Just like he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I've, I've already set you apart unto myself. I'm talking about the privilege of being called unto God, called unto him. Amen. And finally, Christians, amen, we, in the New Testament, we see that we are special people. We are called unto God. We bear, amen, the name of Christ as our descriptions. We are Christians, our followers are followers of Christ. Give me Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 11 through 13. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter number 2, starting at verse 11. Wherefore, mm -hmm. remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, yes. who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Yes. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope 
And without God in the world. You were strangers. You were alienated. We weren't, we weren't privileged to receive the Ten Commandments. <laughs> we weren't privileged, amen, to receive the oracles of God as Gentiles. But yet and still through Jesus Christ, amen, the Bible says, though we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Read. But now in Christ Jesus. But now in Jesus. Ye who sometimes were far off. Yes are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We're able to draw near <laughs> through, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Read. For he is our peace, yes. who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, mm. having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So making peace. Now, because Jesus died on the cross and he he died, he 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 took away the amen, the 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 impositions of the law against us, a law that we could not follow, a law that we a law that was was going to destroy us and condemn us before God. Jesus took that punishment and penalty upon Himself, and now we're able to all come together and be God's people. As Christians. And so therefore, amen, sanctification is a mark of our dedication and consecration to God. Because God has dedicated us unto himself, sanctification just comes with it. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, sanctification comes with this. The fact that I've been dedicated to God is set apart from everything else. You know, I have a few Bibles, but I have a, some that are that are special. I got one, Lord, let me, let me testify right quick. So I have one, amen, this is the Bible that I had when I was a youngin. Praise the Lord. It was when I was a baby. I, I remember being there on UN and having a pencil and just, amen, I was trying to un underline, but it's, it's lines everywhere. Amen. But that Bible is precious to me. It's special to me. Amen. It's my precious moments Bible. Amen. And no one touches it. <laughs> because when something is precious, sanctification just comes with it. It's set apart. It don't even sit on the shelf with others. It, it's in a way. Uh, and so I found out, amen, that... Uh, <laughs> My kids was having a Bible study, which is good. They, uh, we thank the Lord for the children having Bible study. Praise the Lord. And I came this. I came from home from work, amen, and I went into my office, and I mean, I, I, a, a, a sp the spirit, something told me, your bookshelf has been tampered with. <laughs> <laughs> something didn't look right on my shelf. I, uh, this Bible that was standing like this was now leaning over like this. I said, no, nah, something wicked this way now. <laughs> Something came through here. So I, who been in my office? They, they know, hey, man, if I see anything amiss, who's been? And then I find out not only did they have, have certain Bibles that they was reading out of, oh, one of them had my precious moments. I said, Lord, get any Bible. Don't get that one. Because it's special. It's, you know, it ain't more holy than any other Bible, but it's, it's, it's tender to me. But that's how we are to God. We are precious to him, and he don't want us to be mishandled. Can I get a witness here? He don't want us to be tampered with and messed with. He don't want us to be polluted with. And, and he, now, now, you you treat uh, these people a certain way. Amen. And because we are dedicated to God, sanctification just comes with it. And the Bible says, for God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Can I get a witness here? Amen. And so when we look at this, amen, we look at staying true. God needs a people that's going to stay true to him and not allow the enemy, amen, to make us compromise our position and our place in God. Amen. We look at this, amen. God separate us and he calls us to himself, amen, because he wants us to make an impact to the outside nation. People, amen, that are not saved, people that are not born again, amen, he wants us, amen, to influence them and not the other way around. 
Amen. And sad as it is, sad to say, amen, we're living in a day and time where there's a lot of people, amen, in church culture that's influenced by the world. A lot, lot of people that's in Christendom that are influenced by the society around them. Amen. They're, they're not consecrated. They're cosmopolitan. They're, 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 too, they're too like everybody else. They're not enough like Christ. Give me Deuteronomy 6, 11 through 13. Deuteronomy 6, verses 11 through 13. Mm -hmm. And the house is full of all good things, which thou fillest not. Yes. And wells digged, which thou diggest not. When you get this stuff, when you get houses and you get wells that you didn't dig, uh-huh. And vineyards and olive trees, yes. which thou plantest not. Yes. When thou shalt have eaten and be full. When you are full, you good, you laying back, yes. Then beware. Beware. Lest thou forget the Lord, mm -hmm. which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Yes. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. Yes. Ye shall not go after other gods. Ye shall not go after other gods. Because I brought you out <laughs> with a mighty hand. I mean, you saw the stuff that I did for you and how I carried you, he says in Exodus, on eagles' wings. You are not to, who can do the stuff that I've done for you? Who can deliver you out of the hand of the Egyptians like I did? Why would you go after other gods whom you don't even know? Why would you go after other lifestyles that are not even prescribed for you? Why? They don't, it doesn't make sense when that couldn't deliver you, but I did. He said, stay away from that stuff. Amen. It's just like Samson. Amen. He, he's been called to be a Nazarite and a judge. Amen. Before God and God's people. And he's playing around in the vineyards of Timnah. In the valley of Sorek where there are none but Philistines there. Why are you playing with, playing with the enemy? Makes no sense. I mean, because at the end of the day, you have to understand, amen, that the devil wants to corrupt our influence. He wants to corrupt our influence and take away our impact. So that when you talk about Jesus, it means nothing. When you talk about God, who cares? When It's just like talking about a politician. When you talk, amen, about what God can do for you, who, it don't matter. It's just, if Buddha can do this. Yoga can do this. That's, that's, that, that's a lowering of God. In the minds of people, and if anybody holds up the standard, it should be the church. Should be the people of God. It should be those that have been called out, those who have an experience with God. Listen, I can understand somebody who don't know God, haven't had an experience with him for you to let down and compromise. Amen. But those of us that have been blood bought, blood washed, amen, touched by the power of God, if anybody should be faithful, if anybody should be loyal, it should be us. If anybody should stay true, amen, it should be us. It should be the people that God, amen, birthed out of sin and washed us and cleansed us and purified us. Amen. But the enemy, he wants to corrupt us. And, you know, I found out, amen, that if the enemy can't corrupt you from the outside, he'll get you from the inside and have you corrupt yourself. I'm telling you what <laughs> I'm telling you what's in the book. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Amen. If he can't, if he can't curse you, amen. Balaam, amen. He was hired by Barak, amen, to, 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 to curse the people of Israel. He sent them out. And, he, and we quote the 23rd and 19th verse all the time. But understand the context, amen. Balaam, he keeps coming back and he said, look, I can't curse these people. It, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not working. I can't. I can't curse him. He said, well, well, well try him on this, on, on the hill over here. Maybe, maybe that encampment over there, maybe they're a little bit soft or weak or whatever. Curse him on that side. He tried to curse him on that side. Wouldn't work. He said, well, why don't you come down here to, the, to this part over here. See if you can get any way he went. God kept telling him, you can't curse. You can't curse for God is blessed. Can't do it. And so 
Hmm. Next thing you read, amen, in the scriptures is that, amen, Balaam went his way, and the man that hired him, he went his way. But the very next chapter talks about how the people began to worship idol gods. Amen. That's Numbers 25. They begin to worship idol gods. And they begin to do promiscuous stuff, amen, in, in, in idol worship. So they, no man from the outside could curse them, but he got them to bring a curse upon themselves. That's what the devil will do. He, if he can't just drag you out and pull you out, he'll try to get you to destroy yourself from the inside. But touch somebody and tell a neighbor, you got to stay true got to stay true and you got to fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life and in this day and time when a whole lot of people are falling a whole lot of people are giving in and throwing in the towel get a tie knot around your towel and say I'm going to stay true can I get a witness here Amen. And we must labor, as I heard it to a close tonight, we must labor to stay true, amen, even despite the temptations to compromise our place before God. And how many know, amen, that in this life, amen, sometimes you will face some stuff, you will face some trials, some tribulations, some situations, amen, that will test you, that will try you. Can I get a witness here, amen? I'm not saying that you're you, you on the brink of, of teetering and you're about to fall. No, I'm not saying that. Huh? But I'm saying, amen, that as you live this life, amen, when you, if you're not careful, you've been running for so long, the enemy will try to fight you in certain areas because he wants to destroy your impact. Who cares about your Facebook post when you're not living nothing? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> who cares? Who cares about <laughs> Lord? Who cares about what church you go to when you're not living nothing? <laughs> Somebody has got to stay true. No wonder the prophet of God would say, who was left among us that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? God needs somebody that remembers what it is to be the people of God. Because how are we going to show this generation what it means to be the people of God? Lord, have mercy. that's why I say we can't get rid of, we can't put, amen, the elders to the side. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Thank God for youthful strength and vigor. Amen. But those that have had experiences with God, those that got testimonies, those that can, Lord, I love seeing, amen, the, the mother shout. Because you know it's some behind that shout. Can I get a witness here? Amen. If, if my son shout, well, God bless him. Amen. But if, when you see the mothers, pick them up and put them down. They have gone through some stuff. They've seen some things. Uh, they've experienced some stuff with God. Uh, and to see them rejoice even well into their season years uh, lets you know, amen, that God is still good. Uh, that God is still a wonder to be praised. So we can't push that experience aside. This world needs to see what it means for somebody to stay true. Stay true to God. Stay true to the word of God. Stay true to the will of God. Stay true to holiness. Lord, have mercy because people are picking up holiness and putting it down when it becomes, amen, inconvenient. No, you got to be holy at all times. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. God is not halfway faithful. Amen. He don't just put breath in one nostril. He put it in. I ain't talking about when your nostrils are stopped up because of allergy. He, he, he put breath in both, both of them, both your nostrils. So we got to stay true even, even when we are fraught with some circumstances that would tempt us to compromise. One of those things I want to talk about briefly is loneliness. Because the children of God, amen, you know, they, he calls them out. He don't call any other nation out, just Israel, just the people. Just the people of Israel, the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you know, when you when you called out and you're special, you, you can feel good about being special, but after a while, you're like, well, I'm the only one special. <laughs> I'm the only one out here by myself. And you can feel like you're out there by yourself. No one else understands you. No one else understands what you're going through or dealing with. But I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not by yourself. 
God told Elijah, amen, after he had a great victory on Mount Carmel and was scared at the judgment coming down from Jezebel. He said, I don't know if I can do this. He said, listen, you have to understand, it's 70,000 other prophets that haven't bowed their knee. You, you, don't, you can feel lonely, but you're not in this by yourself. God will always have a remnant. Can I get a witness here? God will always have a people. And you have to understand that as you, we, God needs somebody to stay true over here. He needs somebody to stay true down the street. He needs somebody to stay true, amen, all over the world. Every, we got to st somebody has got to stay true. Amen. amen. We got to stay true in spite of persecution. Amen. Well, I know we don't like to talk about that over here in America. Amen. Persecution here is somebody not speaking to us. <laughs> Church. Praise the Lord. But how many know, amen, that when people come against you, amen, you have to still be willing to stay true. Amen. And if you ever get, amen, discouraged or you ever feel like, amen, you can't hold on, get you Fox's Book of Martyrs. And you will never complain again. <laughs> They had some, you're talking about haters. Listen, the, the whole nation of, the whole Roman lead, the Roman nation was haters against Christian and Christianity. And yet in the face of all that, you had stalwart Christians say, I will not take down, I will not bow to Caesar. Lord have mercy. There's a story of some being tossed into the Colosseum and they, would, they, they unleashed the lions into them and the lions wouldn't even eat them. So they had, to, they had to kill them another way because the way that they had designed just didn't, just didn't work. The lions honored their, their, their witness. I'm talking about when you, when you feel like you're persecuted and can't go no further, remember, there's others that have gone through as well. The Bible even says that we are to consider Jesus Christ lest we grow weary or faint in our minds. Understand that he went through some persecution. He went through some stuff. And if he can go through it and make it, so can you. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you got to stay true. Amen. Amen. And finally, being blessed. Because how many know, amen, that if you're not careful, you can allow the blessings of the Lord or the enemy, let me say it this way, the enemy will use the blessings of the Lord to make you uh, to, make, to make you weak. Lower your defenses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that, we just read it. That's why he said, listen, when you, didn't, when you didn't got into this place and you got houses you didn't build and wells you didn't dig and all these vineyards you didn't plant and you didn't got good and, 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 and full and you sitting back there burping and, and all this kind of stuff, he said, listen, be careful. Don't forget me. Be careful. You bless more than you've ever been. You got more than you've ever had. You're doing more than you ever thought you could do. Be careful. Beware. Lest you forget. Because the enemy will have you lower your defenses, make you feel like you don't have to live as a consecrated of a, of a life. Because you you blessed. You got to be careful. Touching that and they just be careful. Because God wants us to stay true. And as I close, it is a privilege to be his. Yes, it is. Come on and clap your hands if you thank God you're his. It is, it is a privilege to be called unto him. To be called by him and then called to him. That's a privilege. <laughs> That not only are we just called to be his people, but he brings us into his family. He calls us sons and daughters. And so we have to fight. Touch your neighbor's name, you got to fight. Sometimes you got to fight to stay true. Fight to stay loyal. Fight to hang in there. Fight the good fight of faith. I'm so glad, amen, Paul, Paul, wasn't, listen, Paul was a gangster, amen, out in the world, amen, and when he came over on the Lord's side, he was still a gangster, he was a, a gospel preaching gangster, amen, and he said, you got to fight the good fight of faith, amen, you, you hear that, that fighting stuff coming from him, 
Can I get a witness here? He said, we're soldiers in the army of the Lord. You got to put on your armor. He, 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 all of that warfare stuff comes from Paul. Paul talks like that because he understood. And then sometimes this is a wrestling way. Sometimes this is a struggle. It's a fighting way. And you got to fight your way through this in order to show God I mean business. Lord, have mercy. that reminds me of a man of God by the name of Peter Cartwright. Amen. He was a... <laughs> He was a preacher, amen, years, years gone by, amen. God used him, and he brought revival, amen, to, to various places, amen. But they, they always pointed him out because wherever he went, he had two six-shooters on his hips. <laughs> Woo! They said, what, is those, what are those for? He said, you don't want to know. Don't worry about it. And he understood, amen, every now and then you got to fight. <laughs> Fight your way in, fight your way out. I ain't, I ain't telling you to guard up yourself, amen, with some six shooters. But I am telling you to gird up your loins and make sure, amen, that you fight the good fight of faith in order to stay true. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> but they are mighty through God through the pulling down to the pulling down of strongholds. Our obedience and observance to the word of God is our close tonight. That is the mark of our distinction. What sets us apart from other people who claim to be Christians? What sets the people of God apart from those other people who go to church? It is our, our, our obedience and our observance to the word of God. He tells them, if you keep my covenant, you will be a special people unto me. And in that eighth verse in the 19th chapter of Exodus, they looked back to Moses and they said, we will do, <laughs> we will do everything that God has commanded us to. Now, we know they didn't stay true, but that don't mean you don't have to stay true. Amen. You fight to stay true because God wants to use us to be an impact to everybody else. It, it shouldn't be that God is dismissive when we, when we talk about him. Amen. We know, amen, that the time is drawing nigh and iniquity has abounded and, and the love of many has waxed cold. But it, it, nothing from my life should give anybody a reason not to hear our witness. We have to fight to stay true. And if we stay true, when people hear us talk about the Lord, they know it's some, something real behind that. They know that there's some experience behind that. It's something raw. It's something real behind that, that these people aren't faking. They're not just saying it just because it's the verbiage of the day. Blessed and highly favored. Now, this it, is there's a deeper conviction. There's a life behind what they're saying. So stay true, because God needs you to stay true. Everyone standing on tonight, and as you stand, come on, let's give God a praise. <laughs> stay true. Stay true. Amen. If nothing else should, amen, encourage you to stay true, other than the fact that Jesus is soon to come, that should encourage you. Amen. Jesus is soon to come, and I don't want him to see me halfway holding on. I want to be holding on with a grip. Amen. So that when he comes, he can see, amen, that I'm still holding on to my faith. If there be anyone that needs prayer on tonight, we want you to come. I want you to come and Amen. We will lay hands. Amen. We will pray with you and for you. Amen. That God will work out any situation in your life. Amen. If you have any needs, amen, we'll pray for you. Amen. That God will come in and give you some strength. Amen. Come on and point your hands this way.
Come on and praise him tonight. you Jesus come on and clap your hands tonight and while you clap your hands you ought to look to your neighbor and say neighbor I'm gonna stay true and the going may get rough <laughs> and going might get tough amen the hills may even get hard to climb but I started out long ago and there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus is my choice and I'm going to stay true amen you may be seated tonight Amen. We pray something was said, amen, to encourage you and to edify you in your journey of the Lord. Amen. Truly believe, amen, that God is, is strengthening his people. I don't know if it's just something this year, amen, but God is needing strong people, amen, strong representatives and representation in this last day hour. Because I don't know if you see what I'm seeing, but it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Amen. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. That's what one singer would say back in the day. A whole lot of shaking going on. And you got a lot of fallout happening. And somebody, amen, has to be able to be true in these hours of change. Amen. Amen. Before we uh, get our announcements tonight, amen, receive word, amen, that a great friend of our ministry, amen, a great friend of here, the Waco Church, amen. Uh, Pastor and First Lady Griffin, amen, their son, amen, passed away in a car accident this morning, amen. So we know that they are friends, amen, of this church, friends of the ministry. Pastor Griffin has been an encouragement to me personally, amen. So we want to, amen, just pray for them, amen, in this hour of bereavement, amen. Keep them up in prayer. Can you, will y'all do that tonight? Keep them up in prayer, amen, and uphold them, amen. If we have as we have received, amen, uh, the, the words, amen, that he has preached to us, amen, and to our hearts, amen, let's return that, amen, with, with, with our prayers and with our condolences, amen. Is that all right? <clears throat> amen, that God will see them through, amen, this tough time, amen, and we believe that God is going to comfort them, amen, and, and bring them through this, amen. So remember them, amen, in your prayers and your thoughts, amen, as the week and days go forward. Uh, I want to say that they're, uh, I have it here, praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Amen. Uh, uh, we're going to get further instructions concerning their, uh, the funeral, amen, from Sister Montemayor. Praise the Lord, everybody. We know, we love the Griffins around here. They have done, I can't, I can't even talk about how much they've done. They have used to come on Sunday nights and have church with us, amen, amen, and I was just thinking about Victor. Victor came and helped with VBS. He helped serve the kids. One year, he even brought his horse up here so that the kids could play with the horse and everything. So we appreciate God for his life. Amen. We have the uh, service information. His wake will be on Friday, April the 5th, from 6 to 8 p.m. And his service will be on April the 6th, that's Saturday, April the 6th, at 12 noon. It'll be here in Waco at the Lakeshore Funeral Home. That's at 5201 Steinbeck Bend Drive in Waco, Texas. Amen. And, of course, if you need any further information, if you need us to get this written down for you or whatever, please let us know. But we want to make sure that Lady Griffin knows that Waco is with her. I got a chance to speak to her today, and she said prayers. She said, I need them, y'all. She said, my heart's broken, so y'all pray for me. Amen? Amen. We thank God for that on this evening. Also, we got a special day coming up tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Y'all got to give a big old hand clap, because tomorrow is the birthday of Sister Chloe Davis. <laughs> Amen. All right, Sister Jackson got her mic on. It's time to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chloe. Happy birthday to you. 
Amen. We appreciate the Lord for you, Sister Davis. We pray you have an amazing birthday tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We want to remind everybody that Sunday we will be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So come with your high praise ready because that's the day we're going to remember how he got up out of the grave, y'all. And because he got up one day, woo, we going to be like Superman. We're just going to do one of those numbers and jet out of here. Hallelujah. That ought to make you excited. Everybody want to be a superhero. That's going to be one day we all get to be superheroes, y'all. So we're going to be excited and celebrating on this Sunday. We're going to be glad about what the Lord has done for us. Amen. And then that next day, we're going to run right into women's convention. I am too excited. I know God is going to move during women's convention. Amen. I've been mentioning the speakers, First Lady Danielle, Pastor Jacqueline Cannon, Evangelist Teresa Black, Evangelist Ashton McCurdy, Pastor Kimberly Ray. We're going to have a wonderful time. So if you can make it, come on up to Dallas. Amen. Be careful. Come on up there, and we'll praise the Lord together. Amen. 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 If you need more information, of course, there's some on the Full Gospel app if you happen to have that. If not, let us know. We can get that information to you. Don't forget the prayer breakfast on Friday morning, April the 5th. It is at 10, no, 9, I'm sorry, I was looking at it just a minute ago, I think it's at 9, y'all, let me double check, uh, while I'm looking that up, don't forget that it is a ticketed event, so you would want to register in advance for that, go ahead and get your tickets, they are $35, and the deadline is this Saturday. It's this Saturday, March the 30th is the deadline. Amen? It is at 9 a.m. at our usual spot, the Hilton Garden Inn in Duncanville, Texas. Amen? Amen. Evangelist Teresa Black will be our speaker for the prayer breakfast. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you there. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm going to be so full from them women of God. Amen. I'm going to just sit back here and just say Amen. <laughs> Amen, because we're going to have some preachers. I don't care what no, say what you want. There's some preachers out there, some preaching women of God that can put some men to shame. Right. Amen. Right. Say what you want, but uh, we thank God. <laughs> amen, for the people of God. And, and again, remember all of the, those, amen, that are suffering bereavement in this, in this time. Amen, we want to continue to keep them up in prayer and uphold them. Amen with the right hand of righteousness amen we believe god will do just that amen amen this being all tonight amen we have nothing else amen everyone standing as lift up our hands with our wrath or doubt and amen as we go before the throne of grace <clears throat> dear heavenly father lord god we thank you for what our eyes have seen for what our ears have heard and for what our hearts have felt by way of your word and your presence God, we thank you for calling us unto thyself, and we pray that you will give us the strength and the mind, God, to forever be diligent and stand true to you in this last day hour and in this time of compromise. God, we pray, God, for these bereaved families, Lord God. We pray that you will come in and comfort their hearts. Give strength right now out of Mount Zion, God. Look down upon them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and return unto them, Lord God, by way of comfort and strength, all that they have put out and labored for you, God, in the vineyard. And we thank you for it right now. God, we pray, God, that you will continue to bless and move, Lord God, in our lives as we leave from this place, never from your presence. Go with us. Guide us. Until we come back again, give your name the praise that's due unto you. These are other blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name. And we be forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.